Okay, you're listening to Live in Studio A on KDVS 90.3 FM. Today we're joined with Farley and Theo from Balloon Time. What's up, guys? Not too much. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Welcome to Davis. So where are you guys from? Uh, I am from Oakland. I live in San Francisco, California. Uh, You guys have a pretty incredible set. Just recording it right now, I got to say I was confused, I was surprised, I was excited, I was... It was cathartic. It was everything rolled into one, and you guys did an amazing job. And I just want to say props to you guys. How'd you guys meet? How'd you guys make this sound? What is Balloon Time? Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you enjoyed the set. Um, Theo, do you want to tell how we met? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So originally, uh, I, I used to play in a band. I guess I still play in it, but the guy moved. The point being, I played in a band called the Broncos. We were playing a show at Bottom of the Hill in San Francisco, and Farley. I guess had seen it listed on the internet and came there and then, you know, did the like, hey, great set, which was very flattering. Thank you. And I was like, thank you so much. And then two or three or four years went by because of the pandemic and everything else like that. And then uh, just messaged me out of the blue. We'd been trying to make something happen. Farley has a band called FIFA Fum, which I've been drafted into now, uh, as well as Balloon Time. And uh, then it was just like, hey, I see you might be free. Would you like to play music without having to write anything? Mm. And I was like, that sounds great. Because uh, you spend a lot of time writing, you know? And it's like, hey, maybe we can just play at each other and see what happens. And then it sort of worked, I guess. I guess we think it worked. So now we're here. Nice. Did I miss anything? I guess, like, the one thing that I would just add is, like, um, you know, like, uh, the Broncos were, like, one of the first, like, super cool, just sort of, like, weird, kind of, like, mathy noise punk bands that I saw when I moved to the Bay Area. Um, and when I saw the Broncos play their last show, uh, which I think was like last year. Um, and after that, I, you know, messaged Theo and I was like, do you want to do something? And like the, the kind of music that Theo and I like, like to write when we're writing music is like super dense, like hyper structured, like Mm -hmm. really, really like stuff that takes a a while to like learn. So I was like, let's do like a low key, just sort of like, no, like we just come in, don't have to do anything, like no preparation, like let's just play. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the music winds up sounding like that anyway. They're like super dense and like kind of crazy and, um, uh, and a little bit insane. But it was like no stress. Like it should be like a fun kind of relaxing sort of like decompression from like the other kinds of projects that we had been in before. So that was that was the idea that I pitched to him. And uh, so far, the balloon hasn't popped. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, That's cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> so your music's very creative. Is there a structure? Is there a skeleton? Are you guys writing any notes? Uh, I guess I'll start with this one. So the... Um, no, and I mean, like, Theo and I have been playing for, I don't know, maybe, like, four or five months at this point. It hasn't been super long that we've been playing together. But, you know, it's like we like a lot of the same music, so there's, like, a kind of, like, an intuitive sense of, like, maybe if we just sit down and play, we'll kind of be in the same ballpark already. Um, and so, like, we... This is, like, something that we've been kind of developing, like, as we, you know, play together and, like, as we, you know, develop, like, a musical relationship with each other is, like, you start to kind of figure out, like, what are what are some ways that you can like maybe add a little bit of structure to a piece or sort of like work on you know like nailing like a really tight change together or like a really tight ending which are one of the things i always think is like kind of hard to do with improvised music is like how do you really end a piece in a way that feels like really satisfying and it doesn't kind of like fizzle out you right know? um and i think that you have to spend some time with a player like kind of developing that language and developing that way to kind of like get a sense of what each other is going to do And so we don't really like kind of come into it with like, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, like when we play a set, but we've started to develop kind of like, maybe here's like um, a kind of a pair of sounds that we could sort of like start a piece with and maybe like kind of bookend it that way. Or like, here's a motif, uh, like, you know, Theo will play like maybe like a melodic idea that we've heard before. And like, that'll be a way to kind of cue us sort of like, okay, like let's take this and sort of like, we're going to use this idea to get to the end of the piece from here or something like that. So that you don't kind of like wind up... um, cramping yourself a little bit like as soon as you feel like you have to do something maybe you lose like a little bit of the energy of that performance right um but it's something to kind of like you know just sort of like nudge each other towards like this is what i'm feeling right now maybe that'll kind of help get us on the same like track towards getting getting somewhere cool with the piece while we're playing it i don't know if you want to add anything my favorite one is called stress marimba (laughs) and that is a that's a cue so that's all i'm gonna say about that all right. Hey. So, do you guys believe in mistakes? Are there uh, mistakes like, in music? Like, like conceptually, like our mistakes, fact or fiction? 
Touche. So uh, in terms of like technical proficiency, you know, like your hand movements are spot on, you know. Your drumming skills are spot on. And it looks almost too perfect to be to be I really appreciate spontaneous. You, that. you know what I'm saying? So is there mistakes? Do you mess up? Is there something that us viewers aren't seeing? I mean, I'll, I will definitely say absolutely there are mistakes all over the place. Okay. And I mean, I would say like the number one thing for me is just like, it's the one thing that I never think about enough before I start playing, but like the height of like the drum throne that you sit on, like it really changes like how hard or easy it is to like actually hit where you're intending to hit on the drum. Mm -hmm. And so like when we were doing that performance earlier, I'd put the drum throne like a little bit too high. So there were like a bunch of just like, you know, like snare and floor tom hits that I was like missing constantly. But I guess the way that I kind of think about it is like, I you know, like there, there's like getting all the notes, like the way that you intended to play them. Like if, if you feel like your intention is like matching the sound that comes out, maybe that's like successful for like an improvised performance. But I, I would also say that like as a drummer, I feel like I'm a very vibes based performer and like the vibe that, you know, I mean this, I think that there's like a lot of different feelings that people have about this kind of music. Maybe it's difficult. It's noisy. It's like, you know, it can be maybe not everybody's cup of tea. But the, the energy that I always try to bring to a performance is like, I want to have fun, you know, and it's like, I want to be like smiling and laughing, like while we're playing this music that, you know, maybe sounds like super crazy. And so I like to think that I, I read this great description of Keith Moon's drumming one time, you know, the drummer from The Who, where great drummer, but like you could hear all these like kind of like sort of like flubs as he was doing these like big dramatic tom rolls because he was up there with like the biggest smile on his face just like having an amazing time and i'm like it's okay to like lose a couple like you know to you know mess up your like drum fill or like miss a couple beats if it's in the service of like overall you're having a great time on stage and then hopefully that energy is like something that is like contagious and you know perceptible and transmissible to the people who are at the show even if it's like music that maybe doesn't suggest that like if you listen to it without seeing the performers while you were hearing it i love this question uh to go off what you were saying i do believe in mistakes in that i'm here for them because i think that it's so easy to to, to second guess yourself because you think you haven't played something to the standard of somebody else and mm -hmm. so a mistake might be your own voice even if it was not intentional if you do it twice now you've made another sentence which is sort of a pretentious statement. But I think that's the way to, that I like to look at it too, especially in this free music kind of thing, which we're still figuring it out. It's only been a few months. Um, that those those things can lead creatively somewhere, which, I don't know, either is an excuse or something. But I try to believe in it, I guess. I like that question because it's... Uh, yeah, you're just trying to, like I guess, have fun. But I think things that are fun for me are finding new things that I might not have known about uh, that can also be useful. Uh, and maybe useful for other people. I also like Keith Moon. He looks like he's having fun. <laughs> Art is arbitrary, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's totally like a matter of perception, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, I, uh, like, I, you know, I didn't go to school to study music or anything like that. Like, I think both of us kind of grew up in, like, punk scenes, more or less-ish. You know, like, DIY, like, a lot of, like, self-taught musicians, like, that kind of thing, and, like, I think like I love seeing people who like can shred and like are like incredible, like, you know, technically proficient musicians. Um, and, you know, it's like I wish that I had, you know, the, the time to kind of just like cram and do all of that sort of stuff. But, you know, like, um, yeah, I just feel like it's it's um, it's important not to look at like uh, like let perfection be the enemy of the good. You know, that kind of thing that like you don't have to like spend your whole life practicing before you go public with it and like start to figure things out. Because like also the live thing is different. Like, you know, the energy is different when we play in a room, you know, just the two of us at like practice. It's different. Like when we're here with you, it's different if we're like at a bar or like, you know, a venue with other people. It depends on like the kind of other bands that we're playing with. There's all of these other things that I think like feed into it. And to have like, you know, sort of like one idea of a performance as like the only value valid one is I, I think it's just like it's it's very prohibitive and it, it's kind of like it, it closes you off from being able to um, you know to dig more into uh, I don't know getting getting more out of yourself about just having fun playing music all that stuff right very well said uh, one thing that was cool was the different instruments you used or instruments or uh, drumsticks you yeah, had yeah. like whisks, you had yeah. Q-tips, you had a bunch of different stuff, man. Uh, no, no Q-tips. <laughs> oh, that's I have, a good idea. Yeah, Q-tips are a good idea. It looked like it. Looked I'll have like to bring it. some like contact mics or something though. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's all part of the fun. And then you had that really cool looking guitar. Thank you. And then you had the pedals. 
talk about the different yeah theo has some guitar pedals something uh <laughs> yeah i my stuff has grown i think it's become sentient at this point it's a little scary <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know i've just always been i i didn't i taught myself how to play essentially or i other people in bands that i was in taught me how to play so i always figured there was there was something to just beyond playing guitar where it's like i have sounds in my head or things that i've just heard in technology when i was a kid like you know you hear like a dial-up modem or something it's kind of a cliche so i've always i always wanted to get that kind of electronic sound but using this instrument that i just had and like you know i did, never took piano lessons or anything or no lessons um so it's become just sort of like a way to play the guitar instrument which has such a uh just a, a history and maybe it's not even considered a, a relevant interest instrument anymore culturally which i think is dumb but uh just a way to to do it differently and combine those electronic sounds i think it just creates like different timbres obviously and and uh the point i'm trying to get to is it's guitar and drum duo so i like to approach the instrument a bit more percussively because i think one it opens up a lot of what farley is wanting to do uh, with the drum and then also you know these kind of synthesized sounds or I have another pickup that will actually like play a synthesizer so there's like these cheesy drum sounds or vocal sounds or a bad saxophone uh, I mean they're great it's just such a strange timbre that you don't expect uh, but they are also very percussive the way that they're hit most of them the ones I use mm. uh, so I figure it's sort of we're trying to I don't know. Think of it like we're flipping the roles of the instruments too. It's like melodic drumming and percussive guitaring and using sounds that are surprising uh, to kind of achieve that and then deal with those dynamics so that you're not just ending up with like we've had the guitar drum noise duo for, for a long time and people have done that very well. So let's not worry about having to do that. Uh, not that I think, you know, we have a lot of work, whatever, but I think that's the, the concept. Uh, if that explains the gear. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That was a good answer. So, would you guys expand the band a little bit? Would you guys get some more members? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I remember when you originally pitched it too. It was like it could be kind of a revolving thing. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I think we, I want to play with you some more because yeah. I feel like I'm having fun until we start bringing somebody else into the fold. But I don't. You know, it would be cool. What what other instrument would we bring into this? I think that's a good question. I mean, you know, it's like I've I've been doing the kind of like the the sort of like free punk kind of performing for you know a, a fair amount of time at this point. Um, and you know, I have they're like players that I just like love playing with. And I think that like the way that I sort of think of it is like balloon time, whatever you know this this sort of like ensemble is. Like I think that that I think that that's me and Theo. But like I would love to have other people play with balloon time. You know, like um if james if you're watching this my friend james goddard in uh in montreal uh he's a saxophone player he i think he would be incredible to play with this and like i'd love if he's ever in the bay area again like i'd love to kind of have him come out and play uh, i think that'd be so cool there's like there's a bunch of like you know very just particular you know it's like it's that kind of like uh like aesthetic kind of like just connection that you have with people that you're just like i know that like we don't have to rehearse with that person they just like they've been playing this kind of music for so long that like they would just like fit in and it would be different that time of course because right. you know you, you're bringing in this new personality and you know like even adding one more person and making it a three piece is like you've added what 50 percent more people so like sorry to interrupt also in a practical sense some of the crew here saw us arrive in a tiny prius that was completely <laughs> full and so <laughs> just we'd have no room literally for a third person i'm so sorry yeah i mean like one of my great theories just about sort of like the way that art develops over time is it's it, there's like a lot of economic and like really pragmatic considerations you know like um just figuring out how to get from point a to point b with a band the more people you add to the band the harder it is i mean like being a dj is like probably the smartest thing that you could do in terms of like having a career in music performance mm. at this point because it can just be you and like maybe a usb stick you know it's like you can it's literally the you know <laughs> no, no 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 shade i love djs hey the door's uh, that way buddy <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, there's like, it, there, like, just in terms of like the equipment that you need, like, or you know, maybe it's like your box of record and like the venue has a turntable or something like that. You know, it's like, it's very rare these days. I mean, you know, sometimes you can find like a venue that has a drum set that you can borrow, but it's like, it can often be like a big sonic risk to, you know, go like play somebody else's instrument like that. 
So I think that in terms of like keeping the number of people like fairly limited, it allows us to be really flexible. Also, just like if a gig comes our way, I'm like, hey, Theo, do you want to play this gig? Not like send like the, the group chat like, hey, yeah. do, can are, are all of you available on this day? You know, um, so there are a lot of like practical stuff like that. Like the other project we play in FIFA Fun is a five piece, you know, and mm -hmm. it makes it just makes the logistics of, of traveling and doing things with that band. Like we have to plan a lot more ahead of time. We have to, you know, think a lot more carefully about like vehicles and stuff like that. And, you know, as soon as you have like a five piece you know it's like you're probably in a car that doesn't have as good gas mileage and there's just like all these little things that you yeah. know sort of like are, are worth thinking about that i don't know like i hate to let you know like pragmatic considerations like that be uh determinant of like what is possible in terms of like an artistic expression but these things like they do not exist in a vacuum like they interact with each other constantly that's the realness in the business i'm sure a oh, lot of absolutely. people don't really talk about that but Everybody struggles with that. Yeah, I mean, you. I, I think everybody would love to think that, like, you know, this was like this. I had this vision in my mind, and then I realized it, and there were like no barriers to that, yeah. you know. But such is life. So, what? What is it? Fee fi fo fum or uh, fee fa fum? Fee fa fum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what happened with that? Uh, it still exists. Fee fa fum's doing good. Um, it, it's just a five piece. And it's harder to move around. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I can tell you a little bit about FIFA Fum if you want to hear about oh, it. Real but, quick, sure. Um, yeah, FIFA Fum is a project that um, it's like me, it's Theo, Kevin, Kelvin, and Emma. Um, we're based out of Oakland. Uh, we just put out a single last month um, hey. out on the you know it's like out on all the things and stuff. Um, and there's like going to be an album coming out later this year. So that project is doing well, and we're just like uh, you know we have to like like I was saying, we have to plan farther ahead of time. So that project is looking at like September as maybe doing some touring. Okay, yeah. sweet. You guys also performed at uh, Stegold Deli. You mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. I you love met that place. Some of our old friends, Moonwave. Yeah, they were they were amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah, they small world now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so where are you guys going next? You two. Uh, you two specifically. I was gonna say, what is the next thing that we're doing? It just canceled. Oh yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we were gonna we were gonna play a show in San Francisco that. that just got canceled, um, which well, was the same. Man, uh, we we have the third time we played together, we recorded a bunch of stuff, and we I think we just finished mixing it. Is it okay if I tell people about that? It's mixed, yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the title is not done, but it is finished. And so I think there there is going to be a release of that. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, October ish, um, probably a cassette through a label. We'll have more info, but you can follow us on the internet uh, and find out more about that. But otherwise, I think it's you know we're just trying to play together. And when things come up, if there's offers, it's a new project. So mostly just trying to see, much like the music, it's like well we're open to things. And so, but it, you know I think we both like playing the kind of like off the standard venue type places so if anybody has a generator show by the river or a <laughs> underground thing or a cool radio whatever we're doing that so uh one thing i will say though is that theo is playing as shoe collector uh which is more or less the sort of like it's it's the uh solo guitar with a, a, a similar kind of like pedal setup right it's the same thing. it's the same so just, th or, uh, there's like drum machines and a sampler too so i've just now I only need one person. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It's like the 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 pragmatics of just like having one person for a show. Uh, but Theo is playing at uh, nine two four Gilman in Berkeley on May thirty first. Hey. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I'll be out of town, but I hope it's good. <laughs> you guys definitely have that chemistry. <laughs> Thank Adding you. another person that would get too hard. Yeah. Uh, that'd be that'd be tough. I think. So, do you have anything, Kyle? I have two quick questions. Sure. Um, could you tell us the, the meaning be behind the name Balloon Time? And then <laughs> also, for, for Theo, do you have a favorite pedal? Mm. Uh, I'm going to answer the second question first. We were talking about that whammy. Yeah. And like like I was telling you, when I, like, I think it was like my first lousy job at a movie theater when I was 16. I got like my second paycheck, and it was enough for that so i went to the guitar center and i was like i want that red one and then i still have it it hasn't broken yet uh so i, I think things make sense they sort of suit what you're trying to do but they're all tools but that one is both nostalgic it looks ridiculous it does so many things and uh so i guess as far as favorite personal bit that thing otherwise it's like i like a tuner because it can make me sound good <laughs> so um and do you want to field the first one 
Well, we can't. We can't tell anybody. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is confidential. Mm. But I would say the sound of it, of the name itself, I think suits the music, and that it is balloon time, <laughs> and we're gonna go <laughs> where we're gonna go. And uh, originally, it was our, our first show was in our buddy Akil's living room for this art happening that he throws. Yeah, right, that sounds so <laughs> crunchy. Um, and that was, I think, we didn't have a name, and it's like, well, here's uh, Farley and Theo. What's your project's name? And I, I just said, uh, balloon time, because uh, you didn't like it. Yeah, and then, uh, so, I think uh, balloon time, the meaning is uh, consensus through stress and, and perseverance. And that's all I have to say about that. I was gonna say one thing I will say about balloon time is balloon time is also the name of a company that makes like party supplies like uh, helium tanks and things like that. Um, we are not that balloon time. Um, and uh, like if you ever want to find us on social media, we are balloon 19 underscores time on uh, at Instagram. <laughs> because I, I think it's something like Instagram is 30 characters max for your name. So it's just we put in as many underscores as we could because like the real balloon time already had balloon time. Uh, unsurprisingly. Unrelated, if anyone would like to buy some helium tanks, meet me in the parking lot <laughs> after the session. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> All right, anything you guys want to add before we go? Uh... I guess I'll just add one. Can, can we do a couple plugs? Go ahead. Cool. Um, so I was going to say, the other project that we do, FIFA Fum, uh, this new single called So Capable, uh, I would say just check it out on Spotify if anybody's curious. The other thing I would say is, so I'm missing um, Theo's Shoe Collector show on the 31st because I'm going to be in Montreal playing with a friend of mine um, named Kai, who just put out an amazing record called Powers the Pharmacy on Constellation Records. Um, Shout out Kai. Yeah. Um, Kai's record is amazing. Love Kai. Um, love James, Matthew, and Rob, who all play in that band. Uh, I'll be out there doing a couple shows with them. So uh, if for some reason any of your listeners are in Ottawa, Toronto, or Montreal, uh, come check out the Kai band playing. Um, it's really cool stuff. I would describe it as kind of like kraut rock meets nu metal. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how they would feel <laughs> how they would feel about me saying that, but yeah, uh, something like that. But yeah, right. check out Kai's record. It's really amazing. Right on. Okay, this was Balloon Time on Live in Studio A. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Thank you.